Hello 108 students, Mr. McHugh here, uh, getting ready to start off section 1.2 and we're going to tackle page 1 here to get going and uh, we're going to do a quick review of order operations of real numbers here. Uh, a lot of this is pretty pretty review for everybody so we'll just kind of fairly quickly get through these. Um, so looking at example 1 and 2 for objective number 1, we're going to talk about adding real numbers and up on my notes I go think of money or dollar bills that you have in your pocket and and this is just a way uh, to work with the fact that the idea that <clears throat> you have positive numbers such as dollar bills in your pocket and negative numbers as being money that you owe somebody uh, a lot of times I make jokes in my class about uh, borrowing money from my wife so if I did have twelve dollars in my wallet and my wife comes home today she's at a Zumba practice and uh, I owe her eight dollars when I pay her up how much money is in my wallet? Well, there's 12 ones. I take away eight of them. I pay her off. And of course, I've got just four dollars left. Okay. So think about this one. Look at a, look at a B real fast. What happens if I owe my wife $12 and I owe her another $8? So what if I owed her $8 yesterday, borrowed another $12 today from her, and she goes, you better pay me up on Monday? What's going to happen to me? I owe her a grand total of what? I was, twelve dollars in a hole another eight dollars I'm adding up the two negative numbers and I'm still in debt so that's how much money is going out of my wallet and number C is the one we want to do all the time where hey maybe I got twelve dollars in my wallet <clears throat> looking pretty good here thinking maybe going to Sonic love to go there and before I go I realize I get a check in the mail and it's for eight dollars and so now I've got a grand total of twenty dollars I've got to work with okay and you could see that the uh, examples A and D are in essence the same and again we talk about the community of property of addition the order that you add numbers does not matter doesn't matter that you start owing somebody eight dollars as I, again you owe them eight dollars but then you get twelve dollars in your pocket you pay up and the good news is you got four dollars left to go get yourself a treat here okay so now we're working here trying to move uh, through these order of operations here add subtract multiply divide maybe um, subtraction numbers can be perhaps difficult to, uh, <clears throat> to work with hopefully you guys are fairly comfortable with these here now think of these as the, the difference between the two numbers um, what I like to do there's various ways to look at this you could study in the book the, some books like to use absolute values between these I have always been able to follow the idea of converting all subtraction into addition. Okay, if you see a subtraction, you see too many minus signs all over the place, and you don't, you have something that's not easy like eight minus six. I don't think you need to really follow that. This rule we're going to go over here: eight minus six, eight dollars in your wallet. You bought uh, six dollars worth of uh, treats at Sonic. Of course, you are going to be two dollars left to your name. Okay, now those ones are easy you know, most students are fine with that what gets students are the ones where you see a lot of negative signs and so what I like to teach is simply go by the following to convert from subtraction to addition add the opposite of the second number to the original number now you could use that phrase or you could follow the, me the mechanics here I'm going to show here in these example aka leave the first number alone and Sorry, I, I see this minus sign in here. That This should be a plus. Excuse me, that's a plus. Okay, so now you leave the first number alone, convert from subtraction to addition, and now here's a key thing. Change the sign of the second number, which is assumed to be a positive. You don't see one. This is what gets students. It's assumed to be positive. Change it from positive to negative. Okay, and that's how you convert from subtraction to addition. So now you've got positive $6 plus a negative 8. I owe my wife 6 bucks. I have six dollars. I owe her eight dollars. I am what? Still two dollars in debt after I pay off my partial payment to her. Picking on my wife today here, I guess. So uh, let's try some more harder ones here. Let's look at example B. Okay. I see minus twelve, minus four. Now you do enough of these, you'll see the pattern. But if I want to convert this from subtraction, this is the operation of subtraction. Take the first number and do what? Leave it alone. Convert from subtraction to addition. Now what do I do with the second number class? Take its assumed sign, which is what? Positive, and convert it to 
subtraction. This is what gets everybody, so you got to follow the rule. Leave the first number alone. Convert from subtraction to addition. Change the sign of the second number from, from in this case, addition to subtraction. What do I have now? I owe $12 to somebody, plus I owe another $4 I borrowed from them. What's the grand total that I owe? 12 plus 4 is 16, and I'm in debt with the minus signs there. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see books will say absolute values. If you see this pattern a lot of times, I see students that say, look, if I see the minus sign, two minus signs in front of each other, I know to add them up and keep the minus sign. I strongly encourage you, whatever way you've learned the system of doing these subtractions, I'm just offering options to help you so you don't struggle with them if you if you need some help. If you've got it down pat, just, just work through these and keep on going. Okay, let's work through C real quick here. What's another case? These ones could drive me crazy. It's hard for your brain to do subtraction. If it's not whole numbers, positive whole numbers being subtracted, it can get a little crazy. It's much easier for your brain to do addition. So here we go. I see subtraction as the operation. I go convert it to addition. Leave the first number alone. Drop down the negative 10. Subtraction to addition. Change the sign. Negative to a positive. Okay, now, now look at this example. What do I got? I owe somebody 10 bucks. I pay them 7. Partial payment. Do I still owe them? Yes, you bet you do. 3 bucks. Okay, so there you go. Uh, this example four here is doing this uh, couple of operations here. My suggestions would be do these from left to right. Our PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, tells you convert from subtraction to addition here. So 15 plus 3 is 18. Okay, minus 5 minus 12 <laughs> turns out to be minus 5 minus 12 turns out to be. Um, Oops, sorry. I'm just here, lost here for half a second. Um, yeah, 15 plus 3 is 18. Minus 5 minus 12 turns out to be 18 minus 3 is 13. Sorry, I got lost there. 13 minus 12, and there's your answer of 1. Okay, hey, we've done it for page 1. I'll see you here for page 2 in a second.